historically, you know, I think people, I don't think people used to make things up just for the sake of telling stories, you know, when everything was passed down orally, you know, it was repeated many times. Well, I said I was a Buddhist monk, I spent a few years in a monastery, and having read the Pali Canon, etc., which is the written form of Buddhist teachings as it's developed over time. But originally, in the Buddhist time, everything was an oral tradition. And it was 500 years after the Buddha passed when it finally started to get written down in a written form. And what they used to do, and they wrote it down as it was said. And in the oral tradition, when you say a passage, he'd say something, you know, regarding a point of his teachings and he would repeat it like three times over and everything was repeated three times and the whole thing was repeated three times and the reason that was is because it was an oral tradition it got people to remember exactly what was being said so there's no mistaking it and there's no changes made you say it and you repeat it and you repeat it and that's how it was handed down very carefully from one generation to another and I've found personally when looking at Buddhist scriptures at the Pali Canon I think that things were changed and it's when things were changed it was when it was after it was started to be written down that's when people got creative when they're sitting on their own and they're writing things down they you know they have certain ideas or certain parts of sections of religions or whatever or buddhism they there's three main schools of buddhism they're all slightly different they have the main teaching but they each add stuff and i think that's when it gets corrupted with actually when it's written down so i think that the verbal form was more reliable than the written form because the written form is easily rewritten written over bits added translations translations can always mess up and as you see uh, if you watch uh, Paul Wallace and his and his channel um, and he has that um, Italian scholar of the Bible and he's been <coughs> explaining how when they're talking about God actually we're talking about gods in the plural as a, as a simple way of showing how just a change slightly of one word it's a massive difference to the whole meaning of everything. So that shows how things get changed. So when they say 12,000 years ago, the peoples have it passed down in their history of their law, that there was a time bef before the moon, the moon wasn't there yet. I tend to believe them. I think that's more likely to be true and not fantasy. That's my opinion. And uh, I'm not a scholar, but you just to know what scholars of ancient histories and, and oral traditions people might think about that but that's why uh, my own investigations into things from my own experience small though it may be so there was a time before the moon so also the spaceship moon theory there is another theory there's a channel on youtube called cosmic agency and they are apparently uh in contact with a pleiadians or a particular set of pleiadians called the Tegetans who are apparently from the planet Taygeta. And uh, I'm not saying it's not true. I'm not saying it is. Yeah, everyone makes up their own mind and just pass on the information. They say, apparently, what they say on the Cosmic Agency channel, they're saying what the Taygetans say, is that the moon is in fact a spaceship that was brought there and put in the sky. So that's interesting. You can look at their channel, just search them on, on YouTube. Uh, they have lots of information on their channel about things, which is quite interesting if you're interested in that sort of thing, which you probably are if you're watching this. Uh, so yes, so I'm of the belief that yeah, the moon was put there rather than was formed there. But you know, I can always change my mind if I get better information, but that seems to be, I mean, looking back in history, what people have actually said, you can't miss the moon in the sky. So that seems totally ridiculous. So it seems totally pro probable that if they said there was a time before the moon because they knew it was there and before it wasn't there then it obviously had arrived fully formed which does answer a lot of questions and the thing about ringing like a bell is quite interesting what do we make of that you'd have to 
go along with the idea that we landed on the moon in order to think that the some of the stages of the rockets that took them there hit the moon and made it ring like a bell. Uh, did we go to the moon? That's a question, isn't it? Controversial. What are my thoughts on it? For a long time, I, when I first thought about, heard about the theory that we didn't go to the moon, it intrigued me greatly because obviously since my history and my since I was 13, I knew that I, we were being lied to about the presence of ETs on and around the planet. UFOs and ETs. Uh, we clearly, we were lied to. So I, that, you know, shocked me <laughs> to death when I was 13. So obviously, I, as I got used to that, I realised. And then I realised, well, that's a massive thing to lie to the people about. And how they managed to keep the lie going is amazing because, especially now in the internet age, which has been around for, you know, properly for a good 20 years now, isn't it? Since, I see the late 90s. I mean, we had the internet before, but really, I would say, because I think in the late 90s, the very early 2000s, I was, a, I was an Apple service engineer for a little while then. I remember using computers and um, it was like just the end of the really slow the really slow broadband that we had. And Gary McKinnon, who hacked into the NASA computers, was waiting for a really, really tiny picture to appear on his computer. And he had to wait hours for it. It was like 12, 12, I don't even think it was even 12 megabytes. It was like <laughs> less than that. <laughs> 12, 12 kilobytes. I don't know what it was. Something tiny. But it took forever to download anything. So information was still started to be passed then. And uh, well done, Gary. Well, and good news when he wasn't extradited in the end to America. That was really good. But he saw evidence of craft that he'd seen that he was trying to download, as well as other things, of uh, what we might call, what people call the secret space program. Which, uh, and he saw evidence of transfers, ship to ship transfers of crew of ships that didn't exist actually on the oceans and it said non-terrestrial I think it was non-terrestrial crew non-terrestrial crew so again I don't think he's lying I mean why would the Americans try so hard to extradite him back to America uh, he was just one of thousands of people that were hacking NASA's computers their their protection was absolutely rubbish it's like gorgons over cheese there's so many holes in it and everyone was in there. He, he said he saw like Russians and all sorts of people scouting around their computers the whole time. Absolutely <laughs> hilarious, really. Uh, did we go to the movie? Oh, yeah, internet. So now, with all the internet, <laughs> lost the track of my thought then. I got caught up with Gary McKinnon and what he saw there. Yeah, so the internet, as the internet now, for the last 20 years, has been pretty good. Since just after then, it got a lot faster and information could be passed a lot easier. And now it's like the, it's clearly the world's biggest library is the internet. But it's absolutely chock a box full nowadays of uh, misinformation and disinformation. And that's not just from people, conspiracy theorists, who are, you know, being given a bad rap. A theory is a theory, you know, conspiracy theorists. Wasn't it made up by the CIA or something? The CIA made up that term, conspiracy theorists, so that they could downplay uh, people. Was it to do with Watergate or JFK? I don't know, I can't remember. Something like that. Anyway, that's kind of bullshit. But people were able to see all sorts of things. But yeah, there's all sorts of misinformation, disinformation out there. Uh, not just people who think crazy things that aren't right or people who tend to believe anything also from actual professionals and from the CIA, like I say, they're trying to manipulate people's thoughts and what they think and how they think uh, by putting out misinformation, disinformation. So they'll put out something that's any good miss or disinformation has to have some truth in it in order to get to hook you. And then once they've got like, you hooked, they'll, they'll distract you like taking it into a direction they want you to go. So you're not looking over here, you're looking over there, things like that. So the information, there's loads of information around and all of it is good from all parties. 
And unfortunately, governments are some of the worst culprits for keeping secrets, obviously. Sometimes there's a good reason, but I don't know. Other times, obviously not. I always thought, I think, well, since I heard about the theory, which I don't know when it was, it must have been in the 2000s at some point. We didn't go to the moon. But um, looking into it, I thought, oh, there's, you know, people had all the pictures, you know, the moon surface with the sea on the surface, like they do on the sound stage or stages for acting, etc. cetera, where they put rocks and that, you know, they've got these markers where you put things. <laughs> and that seemed pretty, and it did look like it was one of those things. And the lighting, but, you know, all sorts of, of a lot um, arguments about the lighting and the shadows. There's good information for both sides on that. But what I thought was uh, that they would, even if they did go to the moon, I find it highly likely they would have made a staged, a staged moon landing as well. So that if it went wrong, they could still say they went to the moon and used a stage landing. And also knowing that uh, not just the skies, but space is obviously ground packed full of life, full of, uh, ETs and all sorts of things, beings that just live in space. Especially if we look at uh, infrared photography like with Trevor James Constable. He started taking uh, infrared photography with film, infrared film, in a normal shutter camera. And he found all sorts of what he called bioforms. He was looking for spacecraft that were hiding in infrared, which I've done myself. But uh, he found what he wasn't looking for, which is these bioforms, so things, big amoebic kind of weird looking things that were flying around our atmosphere. So there's all sorts of life. And that's the th messages that I was given and things that I've been given to me, that there is, that that is the case, that there's life everywhere in life. All, there's nowhere, the whole point of the universe is life. In fact, not the other way around. Not that we're some weird anomaly, which is completely ridiculous, but that, life is ubiquitous and it is the point of in fact this universe or even multiverse so all the information yeah i thought it was likely that they would have i can't see how they wouldn't have made a copy of the moon landing especially back in that time uh, as well as going to the moon in case it all went wrong because they still had to beat beat the russians apparently yeah so americans want to re keep the dominance they have of technology and looking like the best thing on the planet or whatever. Sadly, no offense to Americans, American people's lovely. Met many nice Americans. We're talking about governments and controlling mechanisms, of course. Controlling parts of governments, etc. anyway. That's what I thought. So I thought they probably went to the moon or tried to go to the moon and they also made copies of it. That would make sense to me. So that they can fill in the gap. So if there's lots of, I mean, yeah, so space is full of life. And so also they wanted to have recordings and pictures of them going to the moon, but they also wanted them without UFOs in and aliens, because that would totally distract, detract from the fact that they're going to the moon is the fact that life is all around us all of the time on our planet and on the moon. So you have these competing stories talking about misinformation, disinformation. So you have the story that um, they didn't go to the moon at all. And you've got the other story that they landed on the moon and on the, the other side of the crater, when they landed, there were ships and they were all landed watching the humans jumping out and parading around the moon. And one of the stories is that we were warned off of going to the moon. And that's why we haven't been back. Because they had like, was it 10 or 12 trips there? We went four or five times, was it? Between 69 and 73, very short. And then they just, it's very short. And then they just stopped the whole program. And there was the, uh, oh, also you want to read a book by Bart Brell. He bought our book just the other year about the uh, fake moon landings. And it is very good. And also lots of information that is quite interesting regarding us having not been to the moon and what he found and, and his, his experiences. So I highly recommend that as well. I've got that book, but I'm not here to show you. Uh, moon Man, it's called. It's not Bart Super Moon Man. A very interesting story, his old story, actually. 
Uh, so I find that quite believable. I find Subrell quite believable. I think he's an honest guy, so he honestly believes what he believes. He is rather religious, though, and has an unfortunate side where he thinks that um, uh, if he still holds that view, and he was last year, holding the view that aliens didn't exist, that they were all demons or something. Just a kind of backwards thinking with uh, the demon thing and everything. I mean, it doesn't, I'm not saying it's not representing something, but it's the whole idea is kind of a bit childish and a bit of a shame. I'm not saying lots of else childish, it's just the idea of the religious thought, which is, you know, the religion that's a couple of thousand years old, and sticking to their idea of demons and God and God, oh God and demons is a bit kind of really old hat now. That's just my opinion. If I offended anyone, sorry, but that's just my opinion. But uh, regarding uh, demons, etc., I think obviously back in the day, they anything that looked really not like a human is probably considered to be because they're all everyone was kind of religious back then, wouldn't they? In some way, some form, some form of religion. And so as the church says there are angels and demons, it's natural that they're going to say, oh, there must be demons, etc. Whereas in a modern context, we understand, of course, that life is throughout the universe. And those of us that have some experience at least realise there's life throughout the multiverse. And uh, what people were seeing and experiencing were just ETs, just with different form factors of bodies where their environment was such that they have a body that was uh, built or developed to a stage that was useful for the environment in which they lived. And so all these demons and other things are just come from the same spectrum of other ETs and aliens that uh, live in different parts of the multiverse or the universe even. 